Hello, my astrology friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com here today after a long absence is one of your favorite astrologers who uses sidereal ancient astrology, Trifon Nikolov, and he will be talking about a topic that I did not want to talk about. I'm refraining about talking about this, the elections <laughs> and the two possible candidates and presidents. And um, yes, so all of those opinions are not mine. I'm telling you, I'm not on anyone's side. <laughs> I don't think Tripon is on anyone's side either. He will just share his astrological opinion. Hi, Tripon. Hello, everybody. So I know it's a very tense topic, uh, but uh, astrology also can say a lot about it. So let's just do it. Oh, in, uh, <laughs> in a way as much uh, ba balanced as possible. So, uh, at first I propose that we just say uh, what are the good and the bad sides of each candidate according to astrology. And we're using sidereal ancient astrology for this. Yes, uh, we use the real signs uh, with their bodies of stars, which are called sidereal. You know, well, there is a difference. He was one of the only astrologers in 2016 who said months before that Trump will likely win because he had progress sun on the ascendant. And all the other astrologers in the world, I think just Leo King and a few others were saying Trump will win. And you are one of the very few astrologers who got this right. And I, I'm afraid, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. So this is your opinion. <laughs> Please don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. uh, 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 around a week ago, I, I spent a sleepless night looking at uh, the charts of the both candidates, uh, trying to see what they can. And I have a conclusion, but for this later. So. First, let's see. Uh, oh, and by the way, Trifon is offering on all his readings for the next two weeks because he was absent because of health problems for three months. And he's come back now and he's offering 20% on all his readings uh, on the website for the next two weeks as a comeback present. <laughs> So you can check this out, but yeah, let, let's start <laughs> and I'm scared. <laughs> okay, uh, first I will show the chart of Donald Trump, just a moment. Okay. Here we go. So this is his chart in sidereal astrology. And uh, what we can see here, he is a Taurus. Uh, he has Ascendant Leo, the Moon in Scorpio, and many other positions. However, what uh, is the good thing that he can do? In his chart, he has Jupiter in Virgo in the second house. And uh, in general, this is a good position for, uh, as a president, to create uh, new work positions, new yeah. jobs. Yeah, new jobs. Yeah. It's good about finances. So he, uh, this is well known about him. Uh, he has this ascendant Leo with Mars rising, so he looks a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> right, very well, very dynamic, uh, entering uh, conflicts easily. Yeah, uh, and strong ego, of course. Mars, yeah, and uh, Saturn in Gemini uh, signifies maybe uh, as a weakness, uh, communications, and maybe uh, in general problems with uh, you know social media. Oh. <laughs> and maybe he, maybe he meets uh, in his life uh, with a lot of lies. So, but I create. I think that Jupiter mainly shows uh, the biggest good that he can do, 
and uh, Jupiter in Virgo shows creating work. Mm -hmm. Virgo is work, yeah. and second house is money. Jupiter is where you have the biggest growth. So yes, and and he's a Taurus. So this is again the sign of finances. Uh, so a very short command, as you can see. We don't have time to to go too much in his chart about it. But uh, now I will uh, show Jobidon's chart. Do you see it? Yes. So uh, there are some doubts about his birth time that is given here, but let's just comment again for the same the same way. So he has uh, Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Ascendant, uh, the Moon in Aries. So this is a uh, this are the signs of Mars. So he's like a soldier. Hmm. Very active, very dynamic, can be very sharp. Uh, but also he has uh, Jupiter in Cancer, which is supposed to be the best position of Jupiter. So the best position of Jupiter is always connected with moral prosperity and fertility. And in general, Cancer is the sign of countries and the uh, it is the sign of the people. The pe families, normal families, people. Families and people in general. Yeah, so yeah, we know he's Democrat, so it, it is supposed that he must be working for the people much more than for the elite. Yeah. So yeah. this this is this is the best thing for him that he will somehow be able to benefit the the common man. Yes. Also, I think both both presidents has uh, somehow this, but Jupiter here uh, is also giving mm -hmm. this trade to Trump, to Joe Biden. Uh, however, let's say something about weaknesses in their charts. Uh, let's go back to Trump. So he he has this Saturn in Gemini, which I already described it. So here the uh, what remains is to see Joe Biden's, in fact, Saturn. Yeah. So he has Saturn in Taurus. Uh -huh. uh, maybe in the seventh house. So such people are prone to give uh, much more responsibility and burden to others. And in this uh, way, this can be financial burden. Taurus. Because Saturn is in the sign of finances. So because of this, uh, and they, I know that already there are such uh, analysis there on the media uh, for his projects that uh, he can create too much financial burden for the country uh, with different taxes and so on. And actually this can be true, having in mind this position. Mm -hmm. So there is a danger that he can somehow um, give too much, too much burden to the system, and danger of finances crisis maybe is there. And it is showing there'll be a financial crisis. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and by the way, the financial crisis maybe is close, uh, no matter what, because uh, in the end of this month there will be a, a lunar eclipse in Taurus, which you can be. You I'm mean just saying. Maybe close. You said. Uh, in the end of this, this month, like 30th of November, there will be a lunar eclipse in Taurus, mm -hmm. uh, which is to say sometimes uh, when such sign is there, mm -hmm. there can be financial upheavals mm -hmm. on wide economic level. So this is just a second thought, but um, here Saturn in Taurus shows also his uh, biggest fears. Again, connected to those. Um, and so, these are the two biggest things because Saturn and Jupiter, why I'm looking at Saturn and Jupiter? Because they are the, the most social planets, uh, most connected with society in general, with uh, historic processes. 
and uh, this has such man, so that's why. Apart uh, from this, uh, now, no matter what will be the result uh, of the elections, I have to say that two main events are going to happen this month in the sky. Mm -hmm. One of them coincides uh, with the day of the election tomorrow. Mercury <laughs> becomes a direct planet. Yes, yeah, starts moving direct. Yeah. That's the first thing. Second thing is that he's becoming visible from invisible to visible. Mm -hmm. And third thing is that he is appearing uh, in so powerful way in a square with Saturn, which is in Capricorn. So. Um, Mercury will appear in Libra, in the constellation of Libra, and in square, in the sidereal sign of Libra, by the way, and in square with Saturn and Capricorn. Uh, this, of course, shows uh, that uh, tomorrow is a difficult day in general about um, any kind of movement, communication, and there is a big danger, of course, of uh, things like deceiving. Deceiving? Oh, well, Mercury rules male and... Yes. So... Uh, voting. Mercury is voting. The act of the paper ballots and all of that. So, so I suppose the election process will be uh, really tense, even turmoiling, maybe. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, males will be blocked probably. And there is definitely there is danger of some deceiving there because Mercury, you know, in, in national times, he was uh, also god of thieves mm -hmm. and deceivers. So uh, when he rises in association with malefic planet as Saturn, we can uh, expect that there is uh, some dece deceiving in motion about power and about rulership which Saturn represents. Mm -hmm. and the aspect between them is bad, a square, 19 degrees. Mm -hmm. And this uh, this is the logic behind my words. This is make this makes me I think in that direction. And also very likely the results will be delayed of the election because of the Saturn square. Yes, I, I have read uh, about it, but uh, also about the delay. Uh, if there is a delay uh, I know that uh, towards the middle of the month, um, another thing is happening in the sky. And this is, this time Mars uh, turning from retrograde to a direct planet. So this is again called a phase of a planet. In this way, Mars, as Mercury tomorrow, uh, will become very powerful. Um, so Mars in sidereal astrology is making this movement in the end of the constellation of Pisces, which is the constellation that is associated with society in general. So Mars is becoming very strong. Mars, the planet of war uh, in the sign of society is becoming very, very strong. And we can expect definitely things like riots, Mm -hmm. bad behavior on the street and the like yeah every time mars changes directions it intensifies so much <laughs> so this is uh, uh mars will be like that on 13th of november but a couple of days earlier this will start to be with that mm -hmm. a little bit but around 13th definitely uh, so, as you will see, all those uh, movements of the plants, they are also showing different things for the horoscopes of the candidates involved. And they are also showing who will be the winner. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm dreading. <laughs> this is yeah. so scary to make such a prediction. <laughs> as you see, no matter maybe who will have the most uh, people voting, voting for him, we have Mercury in square with Saturn, so 
Everything depends on uh, things like documents, mails, mm -hmm. and actions that are not always uh, visible from a bigger power. So no matter, no matter uh, who have more votes, uh, the winner may be different. As was, by the way, uh, last time, Hillary. you know, yeah. more people voted for Hillary. Media was talking about Hillary, but uh, the stars and reality gave uh, the victory to Trump. So, what is about to happen now? First, let's see the horoscope of Donald Trump about it. I will show you his chart uh, with transiting planets. It's a simple technique, but if you are skilled enough, you can use it with good results. So let's see. Or maybe I will be okay. Stop sharing and I'll share this. Okay, here we are. So the inner wheel is his natal chart, the outer wheel, the transiting chart. For tomorrow towards midnight, 3rd of November 2020, what we will see here? The moon going close to the sun, mm -hmm. but still not there. It's more like the moon is in conjunction with the North Node, mm -hmm. right in this moment, towards the end of the, the voting time. So you know, this is for Florida. This chart is for Florida. So there will be like two hours more. Let's do it more. Do they vote till 12 at night? No, but let's say. Okay. I've probably they will vote till like 7 or 8, I don't know. But um, the moon is not with the sun, but it's with the north node. So this is again very difficult to judge, by the way. I was thinking a lot about it because I, I have seen also good things to happen here but the north node also can be very tricky like uh, giving uh, problems when the moon is there and and now uh, i i have also seen after all that the moon is uh, in his chart associated with the south node see he, his moon is scorpio with the south node and in sidereal astrology, astrology the moon is in fact ruling his 12th house mm -hmm. in west so now this makes me more about problems. I think this makes me think more about problematic position of the monk here. Mm -hmm. Also, I have noticed that Saturn is about to make a position to Venus in his yeah. chart. So usually this can uh, mean things like big love problems, like the angel of, di of divorce for a simple man, common man. But in his case, uh, Venus is happening to be ruling the 10th house of power mm -hmm. and the sun. Mm -hmm. So in fact, Venus can be shown, seen here as a planet showing the rulership. Mm -hmm. So Saturn is about to, to make a position. But I want to ask you something. Last time when he won, Saturn was conjunct his moon and opposite his sun in the 10th house and he still won. Yes, I know. I know, but uh, if I show you, if I show you the chart at that time, you will see also that at the same moment, uh, Jupiter aspected the sun and the moon at the same time with, a... exact, with exact aspects. So yes, you're right. Uh, that's why astrology sometimes is very, very difficult because we have uh, at the same time 
things showing uh, pointing in quite different directions. Mm -hmm. uh, um, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why most astrologers uh, made a mistake last time was this aspect of Saturn. Yeah, that you're talking about. that's what everyone was basing it on. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, it's very difficult. But here, Saturn is making opposition to Venus, and I'm searching for Jupiter making good aspect, and I cannot find one. Mm -hmm. One that is exact, I mean, and good. So, uh, so this makes me think, also after all, that uh, he is in weak position this time. Mm -hmm. Both in love and about rulership. What about the North Node over his North Node and Sun in the 10th house? Okay, so in uh, tropical astrology, the Western astrology, uh, very often this will be uh, translated as something positive. But uh, it's not so much like that in uh, ancient astrology, including in India because the the head of the dragon the north node is uh, said to be having the nature of saturn wow in western astrology we say it has the nature of jupiter <laughs> so yeah it's absolutely different right but so in this way again i am i'm uh, thinking more about problematic position for the node with the sun and there is something else uh, there is uh, some uh, personal cycle in his chart about the moon. So the moon was invisible in the last two years for him. So he must be very tired, exhausted, and so on. Uh, and, progress, uh, progress moon? This can be seen also as progress moon, yes. But uh, there are certain degrees when the moon is very close to the, to the sun uh, when she's invisible. And... Uh, he is in such moment, and now the moon is about to become visible. Can you show us that chart, or uh, the progress chart? Yes, just a moment. Okay, this is the progress chart. So oh, yes. you can see the, moon together. the sun and the moon are together in Leo, the sign of the ascendant. So now this was also very strange for me to look because his ascendant is Leo and he has the progress sun and the moon in Leo there making a, a conjunction. And the last time when he won, the sun was exactly on the degree of his ascendant, which uh, was one of the main reasons for me to say that he will win. Mm -hmm. uh, and about your question, uh, why, why I said that even when Saturn was supposing his sun in transit, it is because in, in ancient books they say that such cycles like this one are in first place before the transit. Oh, you mean like progress? Uh... Yes, and also like primary directions and others. And, uh, and here I can see this uh, new moon about to, to, to appear, which uh, honestly looks a little like a royal combination. Yeah. That uh, it seems like this can uh, reaffirm his position. Mm -hmm. And then I, I remembered uh, that in his natal chart, the moon is ruling the 12th house. Mm -hmm. So this gave back my doubts. I was wondering what will this came in. Uh, finally, I think, however, uh, because also of other checks, as you will see, that this shows difficulties for him. Why? Uh, the ruler of the 12th house in general is the ruler of the things uh, connected with losses and uh, with finalization. So, and in my experience, when the ruler of the 12th house is acting strongly, 
in someone's chat in no matter in what way is uh, always a difficult experience pointing towards uh, loss or even sickness uh, so uh, that's why i in this in this uh, way i don't think it's, it's good so this is of course my opinion we will see what will be the reality but uh, this is what i think and uh, let's look for the chart of his opponent here is his chart it's very complex it's <laughs> i mean i mean predicting this just listening to you it's i i figured out the transits i understood them but then the the progress charts and <laughs> so because everything is so complex i i made a step further and i looked for the for the day of the election of the new president next year the election will be it traditionally is on the 20th of january i will show later this chart and uh, i noticed one thing that the moon there is in aries like his like biden's moon and so the Biden has his moon in Aries, and Kamala Harris also has its uh, her moon in Aries. And actually, the moon uh, at midday in Washington uh, is close to to both people's moons. This is first. Uh, second is I already told you that uh, Mars is about to become very strong. Mm -hmm. So he will turn from retrograde to direct, and uh, in, in you know, in astrological tradition, this is considered that he is becoming like a couple of times stronger than than in other times. Mm -hmm. And now look that he is entirely ruled by Mars. The Sun is in Scorpio, the Moon is in Aries. The two signs of Mars. The rising sign is also Scorpio. So. This looks more like someone who becomes stronger than otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, you already said that there will be maybe some postponing of the results of the elections, maybe one, two weeks, which will be exactly around the time, obviously, when Mars becomes direct. This mm -hmm. coincides with the time when he will become stronger. So, uh, in this way, this is a point for him. Yeah. Uh, also, let's look uh, his transits. Here is the transit chart. Okay, let's do it to be for tomorrow. Okay, so here we are. Again, it's very difficult to say what's going on. Uh, always, uh, he has been already in elections before with uh, the President Obama, and again around this time, beginning of November, when the sun is here. It's in Libra. It's 12. It is, yes, 12th house. So first, this points towards loss, right? 12th house is difficulties. But then, but then I see that the ruler of his chart is here. This is Mars. Mm -hmm. hmm. So this can be seen also as the sun giving energy to his uh, life. And personality in the, in that time, and this time the sun is very close, actually, to Mars. Tomorrow. Now, as for ascendant Scorpio, the sun is ruling the tenth house. The, this way, not only it is the natural significator of uh, power and honors, 
but also his personal significance about those things. And the tenth house ruler is making conjunction with his ascendant ruler, pointing towards possible success. But if you use tropical zodiac, this is all changes. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, that's. Yes, 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 I know. This is the difference between tropical and sidereal, between Western and uh, ancient astrology. So, you know, I was Western type of astrologer long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm using this because I think it's the right thing. So, so later I saw something else. Uh, what I saw. His midheaven is around 25 degrees in Leo. Here. Mm -hmm. And now see the transiting Jupiter. Oh, making trine. 26 degrees Sagittarius, making a trine to his midheaven. Oh, yes. Nice achievement. That's, that's, so, that's, a that's a powerful transit. So if this uh, chart is true, if he is really born around that time, then Jupiter here uh, gives clear sign, C clear sign uh, that he will be victorious. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I haven't seen that. How? What do they say? Cause they, yeah, it's very round at the time, eight thirty. So yeah, might be. Yes. 26 degrees. This is tomorrow evening, 3rd of November. Tomorrow is 26 degrees Sagittarius. This is Jupiter in Sagittarius. And the midheaven is almost 26 in Leo. So it's very close. Maybe his chart is maybe like one minute off this time. Yeah. And um, okay, another sign. Uh, then I looked. For additional information uh, for the charts of the other people involved, like Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's show yes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, this is her chart. What this is the time that is available on the internet about her. So her ascendant is somewhere right between Taurus and Gemini. Um, probably it's Gemini, by the way. However, Uh, let's see what she has. She has the moon in Aries. Remember the moon on the day of inauguration will be in Aries. And will be in almost exact conjunction with her moon. Mm -hmm. Right. And opposition to her sun. Uh, so this is interesting to know. Uh, also, uh, her personality is very interesting. Many things can be said. She has strong Saturn in Aquarius. So compared to the uh, two other candidates like uh, Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump, she has the strongest Saturn. Strongest uh, is mostly positive word here. As person who is like very responsible, well organized. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has the sun close to one fixed star uh, that is uh, called Arcturus. Mm -hmm. well, Arcturophylactus from ancient Greek means the defender. Mm -hmm. So such people who have uh, this star are warriors by in their souls and they are also defending the weak. Mm -hmm. So she must be such person. Now, uh, ascendant Gemini. Remember, tomorrow Mercury is 
becoming very strong. Yeah. So Mercury is becoming very, very strong tomorrow. Uh, in bad aspects. So, however, still she can be stronger and facing big troubles at the same time in the next uh, days. But there is a sign that she is somehow becoming stronger with Mercury rising. Let's see also the transits for her. Here we are. Okay, the moon coming very close to the ascendant. What else do we have? But the moon rules her 12th house. Ah, no, no, no. the second. No, no. second. <laughs> the, second. <laughs> the moon is good for her in every sense. To be there. Uh, the moon is associated with the sun by exact aspect to position she has. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she's born with a full moon. Exactly. So the moon can act uh, similar to the sun, astrologically speaking, bringing honors in this case. Okay, now let's see when where Mercury is in her chart, is uh, appearing, making a station. Very close to the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ruler of her ascendant is rising with uh, her planet of honors, the sun. Mm -hmm. So, again, this seems to be ominous. Oh, man. Wow. Right. So, that at least this is the way that I'm translating this. Saturn squaring her moon? Do I see that or no? Uh, Saturn is about to make the square, but still it's not making it. Mm -hmm. It's close, but still it's not there. Okay. So it's, it's like something that is about to happen in the future, somewhere in December, not now. Uh, okay, let's go staying here let's just go to the day of the inauguration which will be traditionally on 20th of january and let's do it sometime earlier be close to true like midday here we are. Okay, see the moon is very close to her moon. Oh, yeah. Right. So what is interesting, Jupiter conjuncts her ninth house. So we know that uh, they are about to give uh, a vow for the country and uh, an oath and, and they, and the ninth house is definitely connected with those things. Mm -hmm. Jupiter also is suspecting the third house in this way of signing documents and the like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there are other aspects. Anything else happening? Yes, the time the birth can be a little controversial, so we don't know for sure is for the ascendant, but it seems okay. Mm -hmm. For me, it looks a little bit like that. With the moon, with her moon and Jupiter in this place. Well, thank you for this in-depth analysis. Uh, I don't know what will happen. <laughs> I mean, from this point of view, astrologically chose this. I've watched other astrologers that say Trump will win, so <laughs> I guess everyone has their own reason. As you can see, so my, now my final opinion will be this. 
no matter who have more votes and what kind of games will be there with with those votes uh, which is definitely much possible and i think there will be social unrest in the middle of this month mm -hmm. a big social unrest but i think that the final result is uh, that uh, on the day of the inauguration there will stand joe biden and kamala harris no. So I think they will, they will win. So why I'm talking about uh, both of them? Um, so now I will give you a retrospect view about some things that I said uh, this year in early months. So first I was talking that uh, <clears throat> these elections are coinciding with the time of, you know, the curse for the American presidents. Um. And uh, I have also analyzed the, the chart of USA. Uh, and for me, it shows that uh, most probably whoever is uh, becoming president now we'll will not now. go to the end of his mandate, mm -hmm. his presidency. The only one who skipped that was uh, George Bush, I think. He was on a, a Saturn Jupiter conjunction elected in the 2000. And he skipped it while well, Reagan also was elected on the Saturn Jupiter conjunction in 1981 but there was a, a attempt to kill him he survived it was to kill him about uh, Bush uh, September 11 happened in his presence uh, also uh, this time most probably like year and a half maybe two years the most and I think it's very very probable that uh, the substitute for the president will become the real president so that's why uh, you can expect that the real winner here can, here can be uh, even called Kamala Harris mm -hmm. as a result so now remember if, if this uh, becomes true she will be prone to protect uh the weaker people mm -hmm. in fact this means the people after all um and i think she has very good very good uh traits according to her chart mm -hmm. more analysis another time uh, but uh, i have even seen signs on the news on the media for this like uh attention given to her a little bit like that i i think even there was some uh, interesting moments like uh, from playing from uh, famous actors who played something like that that Kamala can be in the end the real present so mm -hmm. uh, whatever whatever <laughs> right uh, this is my prediction after all that uh, we are going in this time where John Biden will win and as a result, Kamala Harris may be uh, a president also later. Well, Nikola Stoyanovich said something like that. He said that Trump is in a 12-year perfected year. I think he said 12. No, he saw a return chart. The sun falls into the uh, 12th house or something like that. And, uh, and he said that even if he's elected, there's a big likelihood he'll be killed or something like that so he said he either he will either lose or if he's elected there's danger for his life somehow so. i will say even something further so if the things are really like that as i'm thinking uh and uh, trump now loses and the, and so on if he tries after four years he or his daughter maybe i'm not sure no then he has big chances. Oh, well, he, he'll be what? 70? <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, but uh, uh, what, what happens if Trump wins? Uh, what do you see astrologically if he wins? Do you think, again, because of the Saturn Jupiter conjunction, there'll be. So, uh, 
Judging from the day of inauguration, which is, uh, you know, astrological chart of the presidency, no matter whom probably will be there. Uh, so first there can be, so if it's Trump, of course, he will try to, you know, to protect uh, uh, jobs in USA and so on. Even how personally he is more conflicting, he is not uh, starting wars. But uh, under the other presidency, probably it will be not like that. And in general, the inauguration chart, you know, such ifs are not reality. The thing is who will be. And so the chart, the chart that is for the inauguration is showing much burden probably coming to the army. Much bur what does that mean, much burden to the army? A war? Responsibilities, responsibilities casualties. Oh. Maybe a war. Yes. So whoever wins, it's just showing that there's a very high chance of starting a war of some sort. Yes, because the inauguration chart, we'll talk about it more, but it has Mars rising and Saturn making a square to Mars. And Saturn is, conjunc is conjunction with the part of soldiers and the army. Oh, okay. Wow. And Mars is in square. That's why I'm judging like that. And I, I'm thinking also that there will be a certain time of uh, big financial difficulties, mm -hmm. which later will be turned in the opposite direction uh, through the next presence. Okay, so maybe for about four years, the states will be financially tight. Yes, the reasons for this, the part of fortune according to the way I'm calculating it is with Saturn and Jupiter, very close to them. So Saturn will give some problems, some troubles, definitely. And Jupiter later will give growth but of course we can say that first will be the influence of Saturn. Mm -hmm. right wow thank you so much trifon you're very brave for putting your head in your your head in the back is that not how they call it i i certainly did not even want to try guessing because <laughs> it's such a sensitive topic and uh uh personal preferences can influence so i'm 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 extremely grateful and uh, whether you are right or wrong it's such a brave brave thing on your part to do thank you so much and uh, i think that was a great lesson in astrology as well <laughs> how you use it and how you calculate and uh, again thank you so much and if anyone would like a personal reading with trifon Nikolov, um, it's 20% off all of his personal readings for the next two weeks. And may stay safe, stay safe, stay calm. <laughs> Don't worry too much about the elections. Try not to go too much in conflicts or uh, to have uh, good, com try to have good communication with uh, with uh, people because Mercury will be with Saturn. A lot of fears will be provoked. A lot of anger can be provoked by Mars later. So we all have to try to be much more balanced this month, no yeah. matter what. Thank you, Trifon. Have a lovely day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>